Okay, we've got 1510. Let's take our time, put some thought in some, into some moves. I think the worst case scenario for me is being able to take your time, but the opponent slowly but surely just gains the advantage somehow miraculously so early on in the game. That is, I think, the most annoying thing for me. We do all the practice of playing chess and then we'll play over the board. Even playing online, we're making moves that we ordinarily would make normally. But somehow it feels different. It feels like the opponent has done something a little bit more magical. Not computerized or anything, it's just a normal move. It's just that somehow the position just doesn't feel right. So I want to try and break away from that. This player is playing that way, playing that sort of style. This is why I'm kind of um, bringing this up. And, and you might think, oh, it's nothing. It's just bringing the pawns here. But it's this expectation of this pawn coming down here. Where they've given up space around their king. Yet they're confidently just pushing the pawns out. Are they wanting to sight the pawn here? So it makes me feel a little bit fearful that I'm going to get jammed in. But I have played a few games like this recently just to try and get used to that feel. In the evaluation, the computer probably just takes the pawn off the board. But then they have this pawn pushing here onto the knight. So the knight can come back or it can go here, but it's, it's ending up dancing all over the place. But I do believe the computer would just simply take the pawn off the board. But I'm going to push the pawn here. Maybe they're going to bait it and go down. So now I think with the knight moving here, we can actually take the pawn. Because if the pawn does push, we can take. I suppose the knight can take. Or do we go for more development? I do believe, as I've mentioned before, the computer would probably just take the pawn now in this position. What I'm trying not to do is lose tempo in developing my, my pieces as well. So I am going to take the pawn this time. Because at least we do have this pawn protecting for here. And I do think we have enough time to develop our pieces. So the main concern was just developing there. So they have actually captured. So it looks like we are going to get castled. Which is a main, main concern. But bigger concern is he does have his pieces around our king area. Let's bring the bishop through and x-ray through to the queen before we go on castle. Shall we develop this knight? Maybe, if we get a chance, get the option of castling on the queen side. Refrain from jumping here, dude, because obviously he's got the whirlwind. Okay, so they've castled, so we've got plenty of time to think of moves. I'm going to castle as well. I'm feeling like I've got enough company for our king. Alright, so simple captures. Is there a discovery? I always like the look of them, but it don't work out too good for us. So we take the pawn. Knight takes the knight. Bishop takes the knight. It's in favour. We should be up a pawn, shouldn't we? But is the position any good? So we take the pawn. So we've got a pawn. The knight takes the knight. So we we have a pawn, and then we grab here. So we're going to be up a pawn, but is the position any good? Comes down here, knight's going to be here. So there, there, there. I think we could risk it for a biscuit, you know. Let's give it a try. We're going to be up a pawn. That's what we're thinking. 
But can they do something else? Can they do an intermesso or some sort? Boom. That's not going to go there because it get taken. I'm giving it. A, I'm giving it a shot. It's almost like the illusion of winning um, video that we did earlier in the week. Because if that player had just taken our queen off the board, we would have been in serious trouble. We would have been a minor piece down. So they've moved the knight. So we're still up a pawn. And this knight is attacking. It's got this area here. Bishop could come here. But we can simply take the knight off the board. Because our knight is protecting the bishop. And the queen is protecting the bishop. If the queen was thinking of being fancy. So the bishop takes. Our knight could go here. But that's not going to work out for us. Until we bring the bishop here. So we are plus one after that. The opponent's done different manoeuvres that we didn't expect, but we're still plus one. Our position doesn't look too bad. Uh, we were looking to attack the queen, but they've stopped that off. So we could just take the bishop and disrupt the pawn structure. So there's no more attacking the queen. Could get the queen here, but let's see how we look. Mm. Need to get it off the back anyway. But he's got this coming down here. And knight could come here just to start. But then the pawn's just going to drop. So shall we bring this attack in the pawn? But we have to be very careful. Because if we go there. This knight's got a check on our king. And his rook will get our um, queen off the board. So probably best moving here. Opposite their king. Or just attacking their queen. But then are we bringing the queen into attacking our king? Yeah, we are. So I'm going to bring the queen here first. To stop that action. If he's going here, the knight can take. I think he's probably going to start pushing on to our... Also, this pawn is unprotected. So there's a few things that they can target. We can target the queen, but we really didn't want it coming here. Can it hide down here? Not just yet. Okay, let's just take a breather. So the long pause is kicking in. <clears throat> Okay, so the knight's gone back. It doesn't like us facing the, um, the king here. Queen's protecting. We were going to attack the queen. So I'm going to continue with that. That seems pretty straightforward. Gives them something to think about. They may just simply come here because they'll be wanting to attack this pawn. That's That makes sense. Could bring the knight up, but like we said, then well, he's brought it there either way. One of those. Could attack the queen. Queen goes greedy munching for the pawn. Or we could just go and attack the queen now. I think that might be better. Just to see if we can get the queen off the board. Let's attack the king. It's not a big improvement off for the rook. Because the rook can't go here because the knight's there. But I suppose we can get doubled. So weakest pawn at the minute for direct attack is this pawn here. It's got a little bit of a cluster of pawns here which is going to try and straighten out. But if we can get some of these off then that would be a help. It's not gone for it. What does that mean? It means I'm taking the pawn. 
but it gives him the opportunity to double. Yeah, I think that's still straightforward enough, isn't it? Now, the thing is, I could let that pawn go. I could go here, and then he takes. Then we push up and attack the rook. I'm just going to do that. Let's not give something away for free. I don't think there would have been a big problem with that. He's moved there dead quick. I'm not really sure. Am I missing something? I don't think so yet. So he's going for, not the cheapy, but you know, if we go here, his knight comes around. So if we go here, his knight puts a check on the king. We come up. Attacking the knight. It's not got anything on our... So we can go here, attacking the knight. They're moving a bit swift, so it's... Um, I feel like they feel like they've got some sort of plan set. So rook in the center of the board, hopefully we can make them pay the price for that. Maybe get a little bit of a touch here. Obviously the rook is just going to go there. Pawn can't take the knight anyway because the rook has the x-ray through. So if we if we did move here, then he can come across here, put a check on. If we attack the rook now, then he's probably going to go back here. So attack the rook now. So he's making space for his king to move. So let's hit, let's hit it while it's got this pressure. I do think he's just going to go here. I don't think he's going to take. Let's attack the knight. Probably going to go back because the pawn can't take. Let's move it out of the way. So he's got two pieces under attack now. He's got the rook and he's got the port, uh, knight. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that knight manoeuvre lost them a bit of tempo in terms of now they have to um, lose the piece because if the rook takes, rook takes with a check on the king, king has to move and we get the knight with the pawn. Does take, like we said, we've got the tempo win here and we can take the knight off the board, so we're up that minor piece. Rook in the centre of the board, obviously he's going to be getting this pawn here. I can't really defend it. I suppose the knight could come and defend here. I think we'll bring the knight here, just defend him for a brief moment. I think they're probably going back to defend these pawns. And they have done that. So we're going to continue with this then. So don't need to worry too much yet about this position with the king being here. Or even a pawn being here rather. Yeah. So the pawn being here and the rook coming here. So change the tail of the tape. It's going to be the pawn rather than the king. If the pawn gets here. But it does have all these pawns in the way. So maybe one gets taken gets taken then the rook comes here so that's how that will happen so we have to be very mindful of this position so we could push the pawn up just to block that off line spot management 
if you ever think that you don't have to do blind spot management, I don't think you're playing chess, you know, you'll get caught short eventually. Yeah, so just block this pawn off. But does he still have an attack here? If we take, then it's not as strong because it's gonna. T he won't be able to get down, will it? Yep. Okay. So that's the difference with the long play games. It doesn't mean you win all of the long play games <clears throat> at all in any way, shape. Um, but you get that, you get a feel for a better understanding of your position, better understanding of the gameplay that the opponent is potentially putting in place. Because you're reading the story and you're trying to get an understanding of, well, what can I do to kind of improve my advantage or um, my disadvantage or what is the opponent potentially going to do what, what is their strengths what are their weaknesses and definitely looking at your blind spots what can they potentially do to you even though you feel like you're winning what can they actually do yeah worst case scenario you see it all the time uh, where people are playing and they're winning and then the game's lost it happens many times It is a 10 second increment, so it's um, it's no point really looking at the time and going, oh, they're going to lose on time because 10 seconds is loads. I, th I do think they're going to be, they've got to be thinking something along these lines of trying to disrupt this pawn here so that the rook gets down. And then it's playing around here, get the king across maybe. So this one. Big pawn push. It's going to resign itself to the fact that this pawn is going. Big pawn push. We're not really wanting to take, but um, I think if they do that, mm, move the king. If he takes. Ooh, he's not done that one. So we could push this pawn. You know, to prevent that. So before the knee-jerk reaction, because that is the key thing for us, really. The rook getting down here, so that is major. So that is my first port call. Right, didn't reckon on any of this pawn stuff, so I'm not sure what that is. Because the rook can take the pawn here, but I believe we're going to push this because their strength is coming down here. As we mentioned, we don't want the rook being able to get this pawn and push this pawn down. So we've blocked that off. So he's attacking, so he's going to get down there anyway. So we can bring the knight here, attacking the pawn, also defending the pawn. But that's where the problem's going to lie, isn't it? Because he can just go here with the pawn. goes there with the pawn <laughs> we don't have to go there we can go here but he's gonna come down and attack the pawn but then we go here and then the knight is protecting this area I think that one looks better, doesn't it? So going here, the pawn can attack. Going here, if the rook decides to come down and attack or even come down, and put a check on the king, king can come here fairly safely, it looks like to me. Yeah, I think that's okay. Let's just bring the knight here. There's no point putting it to a place where it's going to get chased around. So this is total blind spot management as far as I'm concerned here. 
Yes, we can take a pawn off with the rook and all that, but we're going to miss out on trying to improve our position and keep our pieces safe. As we've mentioned early doors, the rook is going to try and get down here somehow. We've blocked off this pawn from getting down, which was a danger zone. And now I think our king is going to be fairly safe in this little castle type thick situation with the knights and the structure of the pawns. So he's not going to be able to get any other pawns because the knight is controlling this square. Unless he does this, but we do have two pawns that can block that off. So fairly happy now that um, it seems to be coming together defensively, but it's also counter-attacking. Slowly but surely incremental steps to make sure that we're safe and we're not going crazy. We're playing chess. So he may come back and attack the pawn. We can push the pawn. Be chomping at the bit to try and get this pawn with the rook, won't he, you see? So then hits the pawn. Hits the pawn, we take. We've got to check on the king. King takes. Bring the king up to defend. So I don't think it's too big, too major a problem. Okay, that's fine. So as you can see, I'm constantly thinking of what's the next stage thing that they're going to try and attempt to do. This pawn doesn't have any protection on. We've covered off the fact of them coming down here. We can't just bring it back. This rook can't come here to attack these pawns. It can come round the side. It can come here to attack the pawn. And well, so he's going for it. So he's going to be coming and attacking the pawns here. So let's just bring the king up. Or even this one as well. But I think he'll attack this one. Because our rook would just take if he does that one. So if we pushed up and attacked, he's going to just bring the rook here and put a check on the king. So we could just take the pawn with the rook. He takes with a check on the king. Move the king up. He takes another pawn. All right, so he's got a bit of an attack situation going on. Don't think there's much I can do about it. I suppose we could save the pawn but we're going to not save the other pawn. If we attack, it's not going to make... We attack, he comes up, attacks the pawn, we move here. Does he take, takes, takes. So he's looking to get these pawns down. I, I think we're still fast enough to be able to cope with that attack. Is there anything else that can be done? I can take his pawn because it's got no protection on and it's less pieces so we take he takes with a check on our king move the king out of the way he takes another we take Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do that. Let's take. Let's not be precious about the pawns now. Let's um, let, let's get a bit active and see how it looks after all the um, captures get done. Just don't block my knight. So he's got a nice little cluster of pawns. He's going to be wanting to think I'm getting one of these promoted. I don't know why they've not taken. They've taken a long time. But 10 seconds is 
a long time for an increment so he can claw it back quite easily. Might be a bullet specialist or ultra bullet specialist. Oh, don't let your time run out, dude. Come on, come on. Let's play this out. Oh, man. And they've run out of time. Okay, interesting game. 